Um, so we're going to move on to the next presentation um, uh, by Jackton Ovejo, and um, he's a faculty member in the Biological Systems Engineering Department at Virginia Tech, and is going to talk to us about characterization of turkey litter production in Virginia. Yeah, uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, what I'm going to you know, talk about basically is um, uh, a derivative of some of the talks that you had yesterday. So uh, it's all about the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, unlike Jeff, I'm not going to ask for a volunteer, I'll just delegate. So if there are questions related to the Chesapeake Bay, um, I'm going to recognize uh, Mark uh, Dubin back there. So he will answer most of the questions, and uh, uh, we also oh, met uh, Jeremy uh, too. So these have been partners in, uh, in, in this work. So the whole idea, and uh, I think Mark and Jeremy he made this point, and even Kelly in her uh, speech, was uh, you know, the fact of trying to find out the exact uh, you know, value or the input that uh, are needed to make uh, the tracking of the nutrients uh, uh, to keep the bay healthy, you know, better. But uh, so before I get into my presentation, I want to acknowledge, uh, you know, our project team. So this uh, later, you know, gathering effort, uh, data gathering effort was uh, headed by me. Then we had, uh, you know, Jordan and Austin. Uh, some um, uh, you know under you know yeah undergrad student uh, you know workers and you know team and Bobby from Virginia DCR and of course uh, you know Mark from uh, the Bay organization. So why did we do this work? I'm just putting the map of the Bay here just to remind you of uh, I know you have seen it maybe three or four times, but uh, you know our goal was really to find out. Uh, uh, the actual litter that is being generated from turkey production <coughs> in Virginia. Uh, you know, prior to this work, or even currently, what is being used uh, uh, is, uh, you know, the information that is in the uh, SABE tables. And, um, you know, they were talking about, or if you, you, if you were in those presentations, about, you know, listening to the, you know, concerns of partners. And one of the concerns of the, you know, the partners in the Bay, the Turkey, you know, group, they felt that perhaps the SAB numbers were not really representing them well, or those numbers were not really representing their, 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 their activities well in the model. <coughs> so I'm going to get back down and uh, into, the, into the weeds here of the bigger picture or the bigger talks that were, were talked about yesterday. So they were talking about the health of the bay in terms of nutrient loads and, um, and sediment loads. And uh, I just got this from uh, a website and really, you know, the targeted uh, value for nitrogen in 2025, which would be a healthy bay, is about uh, 200 million pounds. So, but you need to know how to track that. So, this tool, the phase six model, I think I may have mentioned it. Right now it's phase five, they're going to phase six. They want to phase six to be a better tool that can predict and even tell them exactly, you know, what this healthy, you know, bay will look like in 2025. And of course, the sources uh, that uh, you have already seen, you know, by different categories and, uh, uh, you know, Turkey is part of this, you know, 41%. Phosphorus still, the targeted uh, number is about uh, you know 15 uh, 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 million pounds by 2025. They are getting there. If you look at those uh, you know graphs, you know they are going the right direction. But uh, the question is, do we have the uh, are these numbers real, or can we do better in our prediction by getting the actual data or actual numbers? Of operations in the in the bay watershed, so again breakdown for the phosphorus uh, in there. So what did we do, and do we uh, the project team? We did this in several steps. If you're expecting to see what I was doing in the lab, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, this is <laughs> kind of you know an outreach uh, where 
you know, we just had to sit and, you know, gather information, you know, talk to producers and uh, uh, talk to the integrators to get the information, put it together, and then take that information back to the AG, uh, you know, water group for discussion. So, we collected farm level, you know, data by through, you know, surveys. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you in a, a little bit what some of those were. Then uh, uh, in the nutrient content, uh, Virginia Department uh, of Conservation and uh, <coughs> uh, Recreation uh, has got, uh, uh, you know, data going back, you know, to the 90s of all the nutrients um, that from farm manure analysis that are, are, are sent to, to Clemson uh, University for, for analysis for the nutrient management plans. Then uh, after collecting all the data, we needed to define or describe what the turkey production systems you know, are in the Virginia. And uh, not only in Virginia, I think some of those same operations are kind of, you know, will be similar to Maryland or to other states uh, in the Bay. That's really, uh, it was really the hope. So, something disappeared from this slide. All these bubbles are supposed to mean something. I don't <laughs> see it in the writing. <laughs> so where is Rick? Okay. Yeah. Lost in translation from my computer to this, but that's okay. So this really is supposed to have, uh, you know, the farm data, uh, uh, the information that we're collecting from the farm. We were interested in the um, uh, weight of the birds when they are harvested, when they are placed. Now, how many are harvested and sent to uh, the you know, processing plant? Uh, we are interested in knowing how many flocks are grown on uh, a litter and how many before it is cleaned out and before kick out. So if you are aware of how the turkey operation is done, uh, you know, we were interested in getting all those, you know, how many, the mortalities. So basically what we wanted to calculate at the end of the day is given a set of litter that is cleaned out of a house, how many, you know, chickens or how many turkeys were grown on that litter. And that nitrogen will be associated with the later or the, uh, the, the that is you know produced if they take three years and eight flocks so that later will be assigned to the you know the eight flocks and uh, you know over the three years that it is produced to calculate the later generation rate so it's not showing here too bad then once we we, we collected all that data then what we were doing we were collecting the farm data we were collecting data from the integrators, and then we were getting data from DCR. Then we sat down and tried to verify you know, that information. Is what the farmer told us the same or close to what the industry you know, person told us? So, and is that you know, what we actually know given the records that we have at the DCR? So there was some kind of you know, verification of information. The ones that checked are the ones then that we used in calculating our later generation rate. So uh, that's where you see, so the weight, number of, uh, number of parts per clean out, mass of data, all were then you know, mushed together to calculate the annual loading that uh, we recommended for use in the bay. So what did we find? We found maybe two things. There are about, uh, I'm going to call them, uh, or we decided to call them, you know, the, the two production types, the one and the two stage. And then uh, the bad types were uh, five, basically hen, heavy hen, heavy toms, breeders, brooders, and poults. And uh, the systems then, there are about nine systems that, uh, you know, the birds or turkey birds are raised uh, in Virginia, and they're listed here. I don't have to uh, tell them for you. Now, <coughs> if yeah, I think part one of the this uh, slide here was kind of referenced in uh, the uh, <coughs> presentation yesterday, uh, 
was work similar to this that was done for broilers. And when it was done, I think there was a very, very nice correlation in, in Delaware between the bird's uh, you know, average market weight and the later generated per bird. So Mark and everybody else at, at the office thought, you know, we may need to get a similar thing for, for turkeys. Let's do it. So when we did it, <laughs> that's what we got. And uh, <coughs> so while they're both birds, you know, but they're not really you know, the same. So that nice quick linear relationship really does not happen. And given that, then we went on ahead <coughs> and decided to run the statistics on this and try and group the different parts that have similar generation rates. Uh, I did them both, you know, per bird and per pound of bird that is produced. So there are some, you know, statistical analysis here that show whether a, a two-stage tom is different from a single-stage tom or, yeah. So I'm not going to get into that detail. Once we did that, <coughs> then we compared, we looked at our generation rates with the rates that are listed from SABE. So if you look at uh, the SAB table, hands, there's one number for hands, it's 23.7 pounds per bird. And tom's is about 32.25 per bird. Now, look at our numbers here in Virginia, almost less than half 50% smaller 50 to 75. So that's, I know when the turkey producers see this, they're kind of, you know, happy that this is what we've been saying all along, that those numbers are not actually what we are producing, yeah, you know, from our, our houses. So uh, the nutrient contents, are, though you, you, uh, I'm just, you know, trying to present this to show you the spread you know, by, uh, you know, each individual, uh, you know, parts or production type system that we, we looked at. But the nitrogen is around 80, and you can see the ranges in between, you know, very evenly distributed, and so is the, the, the phosphorus. Uh, then uh, over time, if you look at nitrogen, uh, you know, concentration in the litter, that's what the trend is. This is for the phosphorus, and um, the one thing that has been consistent is the TAN to, you know, TP, to TAN, to ammonium nitrogen to total nitrogen ratio, about 20% of the nitrogen is uh, uh, in ammonium form, and then the TN to TP is about 1.37. The moisture content, very stable at uh, around 26%. And uh, what we then recommended, you know, for those results, with those, uh, you know, outcomes is basically how to calculate the uh, annual uh, nitrogen load and annual P load. Oops, sorry. So basically, this would be the equation that is used. So liter generated per bird, knowing the total nitrogen in pounds uh, and the number of birds produced per year would give us that. Then uh, annual P load would also, you know, be calculated based on the data that's actually generated, and uh, the concentration that we just seen, and the number of birds that are released per year. So that's what is used to input uh, uh, information about turkeys. In uh, uh, we are recommending to be used to be put into the phase six uh, uh, model. So, so what, what you see here then is the table of instead of using that linear correlation, so basically go by production type and whether liter generated per bird, uh, you know, we take some of you can see, we do have, you know, for this four, we have 9.05, 11.67. The breeders and the, the brooders, uh, we don't have enough, we do not have enough data yet to, uh, we, we want to get to at least 30. So once we get uh, more information on breeders and brooders, there will be numbers to, to fill that out. Still have a lot of data gaps. We need to expand our data collection uh, to other states of the Bay, West Virginia, Maryland, you know, Pennsylvania, uh, so that uh, uh, we have uh, data that is 
well, more uh, covering the area other than Virginia, but we don't expect a whole lot of variability, but we need that for the peace of mind of uh, other state uh, partners. Uh, we need to identify uh, and verify all the production systems. Is it only those, those nine that, that I listed, or are there some others that we are still missing? So then uh, the farm level data, yes, the number of birds harvested, you know, birds per clean out. Uh, can we get uh, or find that even, you know, further? And we need to, again, establish uh, an ongoing system to receive, uh, which we have, and, and analyze, analyze data. I have that system, and, uh, you know, I'm expecting periodically to be getting information uh, from the turkey industry uh, through Mark or, or you know, Dean Sexton, and then uh, getting information also from uh, the DCR to uh, populate or continue, or, you know, the study. And that's uh, really, you know, what we are trying to do to kind of help uh, inform uh, the development of, uh, of the base. Uh, it's kind of fun. Take me away from the lab a little to uh, just deal with the information that real people are generating. Mark, any comment? I guess uh, you, you want to mention as far as the, uh, you know, we protected the uh, data that we got from the industry and, yeah. and the survey from individual producers. Yes, I had to, to do um, an IRB for that, for those who are in uh, uh, university environments. So before the IRB, no, couldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, some questions for Jackton? All right. Were the results that you had listed there, you had the whole line of was that just for Virginia, or did you have data from multiple states? Um, this is just basically for Virginia. We, do you want to explain the challenges you, you ran into in trying to get data from West Virginia? It, it's, it's a very, very challenging to get and, uh, you know, information from uh, other states, mostly because based on uh, the privacy issues, and those other states not knowing or not trusting the what will be done to them, but that's our next step. So how do we, uh, you know, work with them to, to get their information to include? Yeah, Jeff, we had to, we had to develop uh, data information agreements between the Virginia Tech and the, uh, and the individual uh, integrators. And so they have, they want to sort of separate agreement for different states. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, we have work with attorneys and all that good stuff. Uh, but. You know, this was her objectives as their first step, and they want to build off of this and be able to go to other states and, and do the same thing with other areas. Yeah. Time for maybe one more question. Just for those ASABE numbers, uh, yeah. one quick reminder that those numbers also state that they could be as far off as 30%. Yes, and, and they do. Uh, Yes, and uh, I think when we're presenting this, I really, yes, the, the way if you are really going to compare this to SABE, you really need to go back to that standard and read the standard and, you know, understand what they were really meant for. And they clearly state that uh, there, those numbers are going to vary from region to region. So they, 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 they take that, they really state that, so I should have mentioned that. So it's not, they're not really wrong. They, what I'm saying is the numbers that we got are, uh, are very, very different from, from those. And yeah. Do you, do you think some of that variability is because, do you guys do uh, a decaking with top dressing of new bedding versus some areas that do total clean out of buildings? That, and that's, that's one of the, I think since the, the SAB was, uh, those numbers, I think the last, uh, when I looked at the research, uh, the, the, uh, the references, it's 2003. And between 2003 and now, that's the, those, those are the latest uh, records that were used. You know, management of, of, of litter has, has really changed given the um, availability of, of litter and, you know, some other, you know, challenges that are, or, Opportunities that are the farmers have to deal with. So, how do you manage later with uh, minimal uh, interruption of your 
operation. So yes, what you say, all of it, yeah, I think is, is part of that and those are some of the things I tried to articulate in the report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the producers we surveyed, they had cleaned out for five years. Yeah. So, you know, some of that litter is becoming more <laughs> organic soil yeah. uh, so. uh, amendments rather than the litter anymore. But, uh, so yeah. you see that and you see, and there's other producers out there. That, I know there's some ones out there cleaning out every, every flock because yeah. they're doing, yeah. you know, antibiotic oh, and yeah. yeah. So there's a, a wide range of cost management that's yep. represented. That's that changed. The, uh, nutrient concentration is so different. Yep. Okay, well, um, let's thank Jack Tone. Yeah. Thank you.